this is the critical point, is because previously we had the three ohm in parallel with the six, but now with a voltage source in, it is definitely, without a doubt, seeing the three in series with the six. Since this is a uh, two resistor network here, there's no current going through this way. This sets us up for a pretty, pretty easy voltage divider rule, where it's six ohms, three plus six, divided by the total applied voltage, basically six ninths of nine, six volts. So there it is. Our feminine equivalent voltage is six volts, equivalent resistance is 2 ohms. Now, for any load value of RL, either circuit should give us the same voltage in the same current. Now, which would you rather use? The feminine equivalent voltage where there is a single resistor in series with that of a single voltage and a single load resistor or this circuit on the right here where there's a 9 volt with a 3 where the load resistor is in parallel with a 6. Well, let's do a short example here. Let's put a 100 ohm load resistor on either case. And you'll see how easy it is to, to make the calculations. Basically, let's do Thevenin's. Thevenin's, when RL is equal to 100 ohms, our total resistance, RT, is equal to 100 plus 2. So, I source is equal to 6 volts divided by 102. So, 6 divided by 102 is equal to 58.8 milliamps. We can do an easy voltage divider rule to find VL, the voltage across the load resistor, where it's 100 divided by 1. 100 plus 2 times, oops, excuse me, <laughs> I did it again, sorry guys, my brain's working on the other circuit here, times 6 volts, so 100 divided by 102 times 6, 5.88 2 volts. So pretty simple calculations. Now compare and contrast if you will when this is equal to 100 ohms. Okay, so now IS is equal to the applied voltage divided by the total resistance. Okay, so let's see, 6 is now in parallel with 100. So 6 times 100 divided by 106. It's going to give us a total volt is total that resistance of 5.66 ohms. But now that's in series with this one. So 3 plus 5.66 is a total of 8.66 ohms resistance. So it is again E divided by RT. So it's 9 divided by 8.66 ohms. meaning our total source, source current is 1.039 amps. But wait a second. That means the total source current is coming out of here. We've got to divide it up now. A portion of it's going to go this way, a portion of it's going to go that way according to the current divider rule. Okay, so I through the load resistor is equal to 6 plus 100 times 1.039 amps. And we're looking for the current through the 100 ohm resistor, so we want not the one up top. So 6 divided by 106 times 1.039 is going to give us a current 
of 58.81 milliampers. So it gives us the same result, 58.8 milliampers. But look at all the calculations we had to do when we did it here in a single step. Okay? Now we've got to figure out what is the voltage across the RL. Okay, so voltage across RL. VL is equal to IL, the current going through the load resistor, times RL. So 100 ohms times 5.81 million. 5.88 volts. Okay, yeah, we came up with the same answer here as we did there. But again, we had to go through this entire process and then this to get to that. Okay, now, you realize kind of the whole importance of this thing is basically it's simplifying a network. Okay, now what happens if I have 100, in, excuse me, rather than a 100 ohm resistor, I wanted a 1,000, sorry, 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 and then a 1,000. Does that mean we have to go back to these whole calculations again? Wouldn't we rather just use these? So that's kind of the advantage of the Thevenin's theorem is basically you can replace any complicated network, no matter how complicated it is, with a single voltage source in series with a single resistor. This is originally developed uh, way back when, my understanding, I guess for uh, telegraph networks. So it's got a lot of applications today, and this is one of those theorems that you need to know, especially if you're going to continue on to EET 112, 113, and your further EET career. Okay, given this circuit here, let's see if we can find the Thevenin equivalent voltage and resistance seen by load resistor RL. Okay, doesn't matter which one you want to do first. You can do RTH or ETH, doesn't matter. Let's do RTH. Okay, RTH, step one, basically mark our terminals. We got A and B. We're going to remove the source. Okay, since this is a voltage source, that can be replaced. Let's go ahead and rewrite our network here. Keeping our terminals, A and B. We're going to replace the source, again, with a short circuit. Put our ohmmeter right here. What do we measure? It looks like it's a 30 in parallel with the 30 plus 45. So 30 in parallel with the 30 is equal to 15. And then 15 plus 45 equals 60 ohms. So RTH equals 60 ohms. Now we need to find ETH. So we put our voltage source back in, 12 volts, put our 30 ohm resistor there, connect it with our 30 ohm, put our 45 here, and our 45 here, mark our terminals. Now, this is a critical point. It is the open circuit voltage for Thevenin's equivalent voltage. Given the fact that there's a huge gap right here, there's going to be no current flowing through here, which means there will be no current flowing through the 45, meaning all current is going to be going in this direction, through the 30. So if you wanted to, you could even simplify the network as if the 45 wasn't even there. Because since there's no current flowing this way, there's no voltage drop across the 45 ohm resistor. So voltage 45 is equal to the current through the 45 times the resistance of the 45. And if this guy is 0, 0 times 45 is 0. 